Okay, so we got through step 12 of the wheel room exercise. Um, for 13, we're going to create a new sketch on this plane, and then we're going to sketch this uh, one solid circle, one construction circle, and a construction line um, that has like one point is the center, which happens to be the origin part, and the um, end point is like the equal there, and then we're going to dimension it. So I have my working window and my screenshot so I can see what I'm doing. And a little bigger. I'm going to right click here and create a new sketch and hit N to view normal to it. And then I'm getting a circle, making sure that that existing dot that was there is lit up yellow and that I have that little um, coincident constraint visible. So my solid circle, then I need to make it a construction. So you can see I have construction or I have blue, like highlighted means it's active construction and circle. So my next circle will be a construction circle. It'll have that like dashed dotted line. So I make a construction circle and then I need to make a line. Make sure it's still blue here. It's the construction line, center point and coincident with that circle. So that circle's yellow, which means it's good. Now I can escape to drop my tools and dimension them. So my dimensioning tool, the solid circle has a radius of, or a diameter of 35 millimeters. And this one has a diameter of 90 millimeters. So next, rename the sketch bolt circle and then accept it. Well, I accepted it first, I think. No, I didn't. Okay, so look, there's a pencil here. I can rename it bolt circle and then hit okay. Now my panel got bolt circle. 16. To create the center hole, we're going to extrude, solid, remove um, that solid circle and the like distance or whatever is through all. And the merge scope is wheel rim. So I'm going to try to do that now. Extrude, solid, remove this guy. Oh, nope, hit X, got the wrong thing. This guy got the right thing. Um, it is through all, and the merge scope is wheel rim. It did that automatically for me. And that looks correct, so let me accept it. And go back to viewing from the front, get my tutorial. So the 16 is done, now step 17. Show the bolt circle sketch, and then to create those, we're going to use the hole feature. Choose the endpoint of that vertical line we made as the center of the hole. The hole style is counterbore, end type is through, standard is ISO, hole type clearance, M10, fit normal, and make sure the merge scope is set to the wheel rim. It's a bunch of things that I'm gonna screenshot here so while I do it I have that up invisible so I need my working document and my screenshot okay so I need to show my bolt circle sketch with the eyeball actually hide my main sketch because it's distracting me okay and I'm going to find the whole feature where are you living we maximize this for a second so my toolbar expands that's you. Hole. Minimize again so I can see this. Okay. So the hole type is counterbore. It is through. Standard is ISO. Clearance. M10. And you don't even need to know what these means at, at this point in your life. You just need to make everything match. If you were like working in manufacturing, you would know that like M10 is a, a size of metric. Um, like bolts and screws and stuff. It's actually the same size that my bike uses. Um, 
Okay, and then 11 millimeters, 17 that all matches. Sketch points, so I need to now select my sketch points. No whole points are indicated yet. They are not. Let me click that point. Got it. So this is the vertex of the bolt circle. Merge scope is wheel rim. Accept. And what's next? I think next we're going to pattern it all the way around. So we're going to do a feature pattern from hole one. That's the feature that we're patterning. Uh, it's going to be circular. And we're going to use that outer edge of extrude two as our axis. We're going to have our instances five and equal spacing. So I think I can remember that without doing a screenshot. Let's try it. Pattern. What entity am I patterning? It's a feature pattern. Patterning this. You know what? No. I want to feature the whole. So I'm going to select it from this panel. Okay. The axis of pattern is going to be this. Right? What did they say? Edge of extrude 2. I have edge of extrude 2, ding, ding, ding. Uh, angle is 360. Instances is 5. Equal spacing. Boom. Pattern. Probably next is we're going to mirror that to the back. Oh, no, wait. It was a hole that went... Was it supposed to go all the way through? Let me go back and check that. Oh yeah, end type through, all the way through. Okay. Um, so we did step 17. And now for 18. To create additional instances of the whole. Oh wait, I just did that. All right, 19. Show the main sketch, remove geometry from the rim to fit a tire. Oh, so we're gonna like make these indents on the sides next. Okay. We're gonna extrude, select up to face. Okay, so you should definitely, as you're going, be like pausing the video. Make sure you read this. I am going to screenshot that. I'm trying to make sure I understand fully what we're doing. Show the main sketch, blah, 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 blah. Select an extrude feature. Set to solid remove, choose the outermost profile. The end type is up to face. Oh, that's okay. So we're gonna do like an offset, which means like it starts from the front, but then it, like, or it starts measuring from the front. Then it measures 20 millimeters back or, you know, away from it. And that's where it actually starts cutting. So this I this whole thing offset distance is important because otherwise it's just gonna shear off like the whole flat top of our tire rim and make it skinnier, and that's not at all what we want. So let's go do that now. Get my screenshot visible. So I need to do a new extrude. It is a solid remove. Type is up to face. There's going to be an offset distance of 20. Um, a second end position, which is up to face and offset distance of 20. Right now I'm honestly just making this match and I know at some point I need to pick 
Okay, and the merge scope. Okay, so let's go to here. Select what face or sketch? This guy, I think. Face of main sketch. No, so let's hit X. Faces and sketch regions to extrude. Show the main sketch. It still picked face of extrude one. I need to, maybe I'll hide the wheel room for a second. So face of main sketch is now selected here. That's what I want. I'm gonna show the wheel room again because I need it. Um, and then next I have to select up to what face. So I'm gonna select face of extrude one. Good. Up to what face? Assume I need to do the back. Merge scope is click wheel rim. And is anything happening? didn't do the thing. What did I do wrong? Solid, remove, faces of, face of extrude one. This is the wrong face of extrude one. No, that doesn't do it either. Okay, let's look at the tutorial. Select up to face and choose the face indicated. So they have like two little arrows to show one side, one big arrow to show the other side. So I feel like I did it correctly. Maybe it just freaked out because I was copying things in different orders. So face of main sketch up to Face of here with an offset distance. Hmm, it's not doing it, it's failing. I feel like if I were doing this and like not following the tutorial, I would make this negative 20, like tell it to go the opposite direction. What happens if I do that? Just like what other still failing. Let's delete this extrusion and try again. So new extrude. Solid remove. And it told me to select the face of the main sketch. Probably not all of them though, right? Just the outermost profile of the main sketch. Hide my wheel rim so I can select just the. I wonder if my problem is it's doing more than one. This. Okay, then show my wheel rim. The type is up to face. This is the face. Oh, look, I've got like an indent now. That's good. Okay, offset distance is 20. That looks correct. Awesome. Okay. So then, second end position, which is up to face. And the face I'm picking is the back one. 
Hey, I think we're going to do it correctly. Make sure I put that offset distance in, 20 millimeters. And the merge scope is wheel. Oh, yeah, that looks correct. All right, I think we did it. Nice. Let me hide my main sketch for a second. I feel like it's distracting me. Yeah, we're getting there. Okay. Number 20, it should look like this. Oh, we're adding chamfers to eight edges. Oh my God, what? One, two, three. What? What? One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven and eight are the inside. Okay, so chamfers of eight millimeters on all of those surfaces. What are the pain in the badunga? Okay. Chamfer. Let me maximize this. And it's going to be eight millimeters. And we're doing this circle. This. Let's, let's spin him. Make sure I get this one. Oh my God, this looks like chaos. This one, this one. Please let me, please tell me I have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So since it's kind of hard to see, it's this inner circle which now, like, since I chamfered it, is a diagonal. Then this inner edge, which is now a diagonal. This outer edge. Then when you turn it around, also this edge. And then the same thing on the other. So it was like, if we consider it, you know, like, left side, right side, inside, and the front of that. That's everything that had to get chamfered. 21, create a fillet feature with a five millimeter radius on the two edges. Okay, so it's like the back inside down here. Assuming I did this whole thing right. Did it look symmetrical? All right, we'll just do it. Fill it. What was it, five millimeter? Five millimeter in here, and in here, and accept it. So that smooths it out. Yeah. Okay. To add a material to the part, we're gonna right click on the worm in the parts list and assign a material aluminum 1060. Now we're doing our self check. Right click, sign a material, searching for 1060, aluminum 1060. And then, oh yeah, that's right. I have to click on the part. And then I get the little scales and I display the mass. Oh, it's in pounds, hold on. They're probably going to tell me in kilograms. So, document, no, work space units from the three dots, and my mass unit is now kilograms. Click this again. I got 38.77. Man, I'm nervous. Oh no, 38.77 isn't one of them. But I'm so close. All right. I mean, I'm going to call it close enough. I'm, I'm sure I did something wrong with the chamfers. But if you if you got this far, this is good enough for today's lesson. All right. Good luck. I hope that helps.